Hi there, and welcome to this new video about my new Chinese diesel heater. This video has two parts. Part one is about how to install. Um, so it's about the installation of the diesel heater. It's for dummies like me. So very basic, very simple. And part two is the winter test. As you may have seen in uh, one of my previous videos about my new interior, I took out the gas heater. A few years ago we went skiing and this bus was um, our home for uh, about a week in Austria. It was very cold, 26 degrees Celsius below zero, and this gas heater didn't keep us warm. There was not enough air circulation. So up at the ceiling it was comfortable, it was 24 degrees, but down at the floor at my feet it was like 3 or 4. So that's the reason why I took it out and I bought me this, um, this diesel heater. And I really want to put it to the test. So here we are on the German Autobahn looking for some higher grounds with winter conditions. But first let's go back to my workshop for the installation part and I'll see you afterwards hopefully in a snowy scenery. If you buy a diesel heater this is about what you get. A lot of stuff. It isn't plug and play and therefore needs a little understanding. But if I can do it, I'm sure you can too. So here it is, the installation of a Chinese diesel heater in 8 basic steps. To make it more comprehensive, let's take most of the stuff away before we start with step 1. That leaves us with this, a sort of dummy test setup which we will assume to be the vehicle we want to install the heater in. In my case, that's the bus you just saw. And with this thing, the actual heater. This is the heart of the set. I bought this Chinese 5 kW version and there's also a 2 kW available. This is actually a cheap copy of the better European brands like Webasto and Eberspacher. The Chinese are pretty good cloners and it'll cost you about 130 euros with all the stuff I just showed you. The basic principle of this air heater is that it sucks in fresh air here and it blows out hot air here. Let's take this thing apart and have a look at the inside. We just unscrew this one, it's pretty simple, and take the cover off. So, uh, the van sucks in fresh air, uh, leads it along the heater, and then hot air comes out. Like every engine, this thing needs a mix of fuel and combustion air, and it has to get rid of exhaust gases. So, this is the inlet for the combustion air. This is the inlet for the diesel, the fuel, and this is the outlet for the uh, exhaust gases. The best way of mounting this diesel heater is on a flat floor, like this. There are types that you can mount sideways, but make sure that the fuel inlet, I'll show you, this one, is on top. So you have to do it this way and then you can mount it sideways. This one is on top and that means that the glow plug is on top also. That's the principle. Now I'm going to mount it to the floor and that's where this provided base plate comes in. This is a base plate that is okay for a metal floor but in my bus I have a wooden floor, so there I'm gonna use this one. I made it myself out of stainless steel. Well, I sort of copied it and 
as you can see, Europeans can uh, clone as well and make it better. Combustion air inlet and the fuel line and the exhaust pipe, they are going to be outside. So we have to drill some holes. We take off this rubber, put it on the floor. and then put the rubber back. So, let's make a hole. And I make one smaller hole. I'll show you why later. Now mount the base plate to the heater with the provided bolts. Now we're gonna need a few extra parts. So, clamps. This is the air inlet, that's the black one, and mounted with the clamp that comes along with the set. And the same goes for the exhaust outlet. Now you might consider to use better clamps than these, because these Chinese ones aren't very good. So for safety precautions, I would uh, recommend to buy better ones. And then take about one meter of the fuel hose, cut it, slide one of these little clamps over it. And for this one also, maybe you should buy a better quality for it. And slide it over the fuel inlet. And then you can put the heater in and screw it to the floor. The next parts. The exhaust muffler and the combustion air filter. And two clamps again. Combustion air filter with clamp and muffler with clamp. Tighten the clamps and then be sure of five things. One, make sure the muffler is in horizontal position with the little hole downwards, as you can see here. Second one to be sure of is make sure the muffler is on the outside of the vehicle. So not only under it, but also on the outside. Otherwise, all the gases will stay under your vehicle and might come in. Three, make sure the inlet filter of your combustion air is as far away as possible from the muffler. And four, make sure both muffler and intake filter are in the opposite direction of the vehicle's driving direction. And five, fit them well to the chassis or the body of your vehicle. There are several um, parts, provided parts to do that with, like this one and like these clamps. This is the 10 liter fuel tank that comes with the set. It has three holes in it to mount it, but we'll get to that later. First, the connector for the fuel hose. We need these parts. The connector, two little rubber rings and the nut. Now drill an eight millimeter hole in the tank. The manual tells you to drill it in the bottom, but I drilled it here. It won't give my heater the very last drop of fuel, but that's the whole idea. This way the system won't suck in the sediment from the bottom of the tank. And then we need a piece of flexible wire. Put the wire through the little hole until it comes out at the big opening. Now take the connector, put the first rubber on, Slide it over the wire, this way, and then bend the wire a little. Pull the wire in until the thinner part of the connector comes out. And then pull the wire out. 
put the second rubber on and the nut not too tight because then you will damage the rubber now I prefer all this diesel stuff um, outside my living area and my bus has enough space for that in the hold like here if you don't have enough space you will have to mount it inside for this video I will mount it here inside <laughs> Next part, pump with pump holder, fuel filter, fuel hose, and these little fuel hose clamps. Now first about this pump. If you take a good look, you see there's an arrow here pointing in that direction. That means that the diesel comes in here from the tank and it goes out here to the heater. Now if you mount the pump, make sure it is up like this, about 30 to 35 degrees. That way there won't stay air bubbles in the pump mechanism. The filter. This is the fuel filter. The fuel has to go in this way and has to go out that way. Then we take a 1 meter fuel hose and stick it through the second hole that we made in the floor. Connect it to the pump and slide the clamp over it. Take a second piece of fuel hose, put the filter on in the right direction and connect it to the pump. And now all we have to do is connect the filter to the fuel tank. Done. Now if you have a smaller vehicle, you might like to leave it like this. The hot air will come out anyway. Um, but if you want to guide the hot air, that's where this hot air duct comes in. And the hot air outlet. You just mount it with the clamps to this side of the heater uh, make a hole somewhere where you want the hot air and then from the other side mount the hot air outlet now this may seem very complicated but it isn't all these connectors are specific so you can't do it wrong. First thing to do for safety is taking out the fuse. We'll put it back later. And then just find the right connectors. This one fits, so it's the right one. This one fits here. So that's the right one, and this one fits the pump. So that's the right one too. And then the positive and the negative. They have to go to the battery, so let's pretend the battery is here. Positive and negative. Bring back the fuse. Step 8, the final one. Now this fuel pump gets lubricated by the diesel fuel. But there is no diesel fuel in this fuel hose yet or in the pump or in the filter. So we're going to do some pre-priming. I bought me this syringe to do that with. So take off the clamp, put the syringe on the fuel hose and just suck diesel in there and try to fill the filter as much as you can. Put the fuel hose back on the pump. 
Now that's about it. Let's go back to the bus and see if it works. Now as you can see, I found my winter scenery. There she is. Okay, let's have a look at the heater. First the muffler. It's down there, as you can see. And then the rest. Here it is. Fuel tank. Fuel pump, which is clicking. Air inlet, must in the air inlet, and this is the exhaust pipe. Um, this is the fuel line. You may think, where's the green one? Well, it's inside. This is a regular uh, fuel hose for protection. Okay, so let's go inside. And then the heater itself is down here. I'll show you. The heater itself, the air ducts, one here, one over there to go to the other side. If you listen well, you can hear it click. About the controller. First, the OK button. Uh, it tells you the time, it tells you the temperature, which is 19 degrees Celsius right now, which is pretty comfortable. Um, it tells you the hertz, so that is how many uh, times the pump clicks per second. It's now on 2.7. And it tells you how much volts uh, your battery has and it tells you things about error codes. Okay, back to the time again. Now there's actually two uh, ways of operating uh, this heater. It's now on the Hertz. So if I want, to, I want the heater to go faster, I want more warmth, then I just push this button and then as you see, it goes up, up to, 5.4 that's uh, that's the maximum and then the heater will uh, take more diesel and blow out more hot air so let's go back to the original setting which was 2.7 and there is another way of operating this heater if you push push these buttons at the same time then you see um, the room temperature and then you see another temperature and that is the temperature you want to reach. If I put this up like this, then the, um, the heater will go to full speed, full power, just until it has reached that 22 degrees Celsius and then it will slow down and you can operate it like this. Okay. Back to the original setting. Two point seven. Now the lowest setting for the Hertz is one point four. You see, it doesn't go any lower. Now let's have a look at how my uh, diesel heater did last night when it was a lot colder than it is now. So here we are, it's about uh, 10.45 at night um, and I closed all the curtains to keep the warmth in, as you can see. Now, the heater is blowing hot air. These are the vents, this is one and there's one on the other side. The heater is running half speed. 2.7 Hertz and it can go up 
to 5.4 so this is half speed and then let's have a look at the temperature outside well they say it's 3.8 below zero i guess it's a little bit colder out here because we're on the top of a hill so it will be minus four minus five um let's have a look at the indoor 19.2 so that's pretty comfortable and it is comfortable on the floor as well as up here. So that's a big improvement compared to my old gas heater. It works. Okay, it's way after midnight now. It is 4.2 degrees Celsius below zero and indoor it's 18.9. That's a little warm to go to sleep. So I'm going to change the settings uh, like this back to 1.4 during the night and then the temp temperature will drop but that's okay for sleeping and I'll see you in the morning. Good morning on this beautiful winter's day uh, this morning when I woke up, it was 8 degrees Celsius below zero outside and inside it was plus 8 degrees. Now that's okay for sleeping, but for getting up it's a little cold. But then again, um, I was able to turn up my heater from my bed bunk with this little remote control. So that came in very handy. There's two more things I want to share with you. First one is uh, the diesel. A few minutes ago in this video you saw my diesel tank, my fuel tank. There's not conventional diesel in it but HVO, also known as blue diesel. This stuff contains less aromatics, polyaromatics and sulfur, the products that are responsible for uh, the soot buildup. And so this stuff will help you to make your diesel heater uh, burn a lot cleaner and it can be the difference between this and this. If you're interested in this stuff, blue diesel, then just tune in on my special video about it, which you can find in the description below. Second thing I want to share with you is this owner's manual. Uh, it comes with a set and to be completely honest, it is total rubbish. On the other hand, there is a lot of intel to be found on the internet and in several uh, diesel heater Facebook groups about the controller about settings uh, and about how to operate it. Okay then, let's go outside. Well, that's it for this winter test. Did my new heater pass the test? Yes, I think so. Um, at these temperatures, uh, at night I can put the heater at half speed and even then it's comfortable. So yes, I think it did pass the test and at daytime when the sun is shining I can even keep it to 1.4, the lowest setting. Um, okay, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in the next one. Bye!